everybody. It's me. Fingers from the STEM Outreach Center at New Mexico State University here for our fifth and final video of our five-part STEM Eats series. Don't forget kiddos and guardians, this cookbook is a free printable available on our website for download and printing. Just visit us at stem.nmsu.edu. That's stem, S-T-E-M dot N-M-S-U dot E-D-U. Well, y'all, it's a little sad today because this is the final recipe in our five-part series cookbook that we will be making before we move on to another theme. But I like to go out of each series on a sweet note. So we are going to be making cookies. All right, everybody. So here we have our five ingredient recipe for our cookies. These are flourless peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. These cookies are very delicious cookies. These cookies appeal to anyone who enjoys chocolate and peanut butter, um, but also individuals who may have a flour, wheat, or gluten allergy, such as myself. This cookie mixture does not require any flour, which is really interesting, and I really encourage you guys to read the chemistry portion of this recipe so that you can learn about how it's possible for us to make a cookie without any flour. It'll still be just as delicious. So let's go over the ingredients. The first ingredient we will need, peanut butter. Here I have creamy peanut butter. You are welcome to use creamy, chunky, crunchy, whatever you have at your home that's available to you. You're only going to need one cup of peanut butter, so you're not gonna need a whole container of peanut butter. So if you have any peanut butter laying around the house that you need to get rid of, you can use it up. To the second ingredient we have is brown sugar. You are going to need one cup of brown sugar for your cookies. Here I have dark brown sugar. I'm using dark brown sugar because this is the sugar I have in my house. You are welcome to use dark brown sugar, golden brown sugar, light brown sugar, any type of brown sugar you have laying around the house that you need to get rid of. And you're only gonna need a cup of this. So again, you don't need the whole entire container. You just need a cup. And the darkness of your brown sugar determines the darkness of your cookies when they are baking. This sugar contains a certain amount of molasses in it and that's going to affect whether our cookies come out darker or lighter. The flavor is not affected, just the color. So my cookies are probably gonna come out a little more browned, but this is what I have, so this is what I'm using. Our third ingredient is one large egg. Yes, this is an egg, you guys. Some of you might be used to just seeing the white eggs at the grocery store, but actually there are a variety of shades of brown eggs that range from dark brown all the way to white and some eggs that are even speckled. Whatever the chicken has been fed by the farmer, whatever the chicken is eating is going to affect the color of the chicken's egg and the color of the shell. So it doesn't actually really have anything to do with the egg itself. You will see that all the eggs look identical when you crack them open into your recipe, but the shell will be a different color depending on what the chicken has been fed. Ingredient number four is going to be one teaspoon of baking soda. You wanna make sure you use pure baking soda. Baking soda is used in science and cooking because we need to remember you guys that food is a science, okay? Baking is a science. Chemical reactions occur when we are baking and that allows for the product that we are creating to puff up. So when your bread rises, when your cookies puff up, when they're baking in the oven, that's all chemical reactions that are occurring. So we're going to use a bit of baking soda to make sure that chemical reaction occurs today in our cookies and gives us a nice fluffy cookie. And 
our final ingredient for our five ingredient flourless peanut butter chocolate chip cookies is my favorite and many others a half a cup of chocolate chips i am using milk chocolate chips because that is my favorite type of chocolate but you are welcome to use any type of chocolate chips that you have laying around the house so if you like dark chocolate use dark chocolate if you like semi-sweet chocolate use semi-sweet if your mom or your grandma has some butterscotch chips or some white chocolate chip morsels laying around the house use those as a half a cup if you don't like chocolate feel free to substitute nuts or dried fruit. It's your choice. I'm just using this to make the classic chocolate and peanut butter combination that many people love. And I think it's going to be really fun for you all to see because it's always really exciting to see the melted chocolate chip morsels in there when your cookies are all warm and out of the oven and ready to eat with a glass of milk. So that's our final ingredient. Now let's talk a little bit about the materials you will need today to create the recipe. We're going to be using a whisk. I like a whisk for mixing ingredients. You do not have to have a whisk. You can use a fork. A fork does the exact same thing. So if you have a fork available to you, use a fork, use a whisk. Here's our trusty spatula. You guys have seen this in some of our other ingredient recipes that we've created. And this, of course, I use to scrape out the contents of my measuring cups fold ingredients into a bowl. We have a measuring spoon, one teaspoon. So this will be used to measure our baking soda. And we have a few measuring bowls. We have a half cup measuring bowl. And we have a one cup measuring bowl. And that's what we're going to need to measure out the exact contents of this recipe. I've got my trusty clear bowl. You guys have seen this in most of my videos. I use this to mix all of my ingredients and create my cookies, so I'll be using the bowl. And then you're going to need a nonstick baking sheet. We're gonna be baking our cookies today at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna to wanna to use a baking sheet. Um, this baking sheet is seasoned. You can use a seasoned baking sheet, brand new baking sheet, if your parents or your guardians have a different baking sheet available to you, feel free to use that. You just wanna make sure it's non-stick. And let's get started, cause I'm ready to eat some cookies. Okay, everybody, we have prepped our ingredients. We are ready to begin the assembly of our cookies. We're going to start with our clear glass mixing bowl that has one cup of brown sugar already measured out into there. So you can see we put our dark brown sugar in there and we are ready to add the additional ingredients. To this, we will be adding one cup of peanut butter. Here's our peanut butter and I'm going to use the trusty spatula to get it all out. I'll tell you kiddos, there's nothing that I dislike worse than watching those cooking videos on TV where they leave a lot of the contents of each ingredient in the bowl when they're creating their recipes. You wanna get down in there and get every little smidge out so that there's no waste of food and you get the exact amount you need for your recipe. Because baking is a science, you don't want to be short or over on any of your measurements. So there's our peanut butter, lovely. And now we're going to add to this our egg. So here comes our large egg. We're going to crack this. Now, I would not suggest cracking the egg straight into your mixture. Sometimes you get a bad egg. You can ask your mom or dad or guardian about that. And if you get a bad egg, which is an egg that you should not eat, you don't wanna crack it directly into your bowl because then you're gonna to have to throw everything out. So the best thing to do is just use your leftover container from whatever you measured last, which is for me, peanut butter, and go ahead and crack your egg into there, just to make sure that your egg is a fresh, healthy, delicious egg that we can use. So there it is, lovely, lovely yellow, lovely white. Looks good, okay? We can add that into our mixture. Alrighty, and we're almost done getting there. Now we're to this, we're going to add our one teaspoon of baking soda. So here it is. 
Now, this is also measured flat, okay? So when you measure your baking soda, make sure to use a, a knife or something flat to level it off. That way you get exactly one teaspoon. All right, so there it is. We're gonna add that in, okay? And now we are going to stir all of this together and that's where our trusty whisk is going to come in, okay? Because we've got an egg that needs to be evenly distributed, that means evenly mixed throughout, we want to make sure that we use something that's going to break everything down, pulverize it, which means really get in there and kind of mush it all together so that it's every little spoonful of this has a bit of each ingredient in there. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it for about a minute and then we'll come back and I will show you how we are going to fold the chocolate chips in. We'll see you soon. Okay folks, we're back again here. We have spent about a minute and a half mixing our mixture for our cookies very well, getting everything incorporated and the whisk is now in the sink to be washed and I am ready to use my flat spatula. And the purpose of using this is because our final ingredient is, let's not forget, our delicious one half cup of chocolate chips, okay? We are going to be lightly folding these into our mixture. And you wanna use the spatula to fold, okay? If you haven't had a chance to see the folding process, you're getting to look at it now. And if you can't remember what the definition of folding is, uh, we discussed it in one of our previous videos, but it's a way to mix the ingredients that you have into your mixture without pulverizing them, destroying any parts of them, and we don't want to also over mix the chocolate chips because the mixture can get stiff and the chocolate chips can start to melt before we even get them into the oven. So that looks lovely and we have folded it in, only took about 15, 20 seconds and we are ready now to measure these out and place them on our nonstick cookie sheet. Okay guys, here we are. We're ready to form our one inch cookie balls and place them on our nonstick cooking sheet. This recipe creates 12 one inch cookie balls. You can form these balls using your hands if you like to get hands on and touch the mixture and form the balls. All you need to do is simply spray your hands down with a little bit of nonstick oil or dip your fingers in a little bit of water and you can do that. I'm going to use this spoon. This is a large spoon and this will help me achieve the size that I want for my cookie balls. So it, again, it's a one inch cookie ball and I'm just going to demonstrate how we are going to do that. I'm taking a heaping spoonful onto my spoon and dropping it into my hand. And I will now use a counterclockwise circular motion to create my cookie ball. And this is a lot of fun because once you get your little cookie ball there, they're just so cute and they're so fun to put on your cookie sheet. Now, when you're creating your cookie balls, you want to make sure that you space them evenly, okay? Now, you want to give them plenty of space between each other because cookies melt. That brown sugar, once it reaches a certain temperature, is going to change states, meaning it won't, it will no longer be a solid state. It will start to become liquid. It will spread on your sheet. So you do not want your cookies to be right next to each other. They will end up spreading into each other, getting stuck together and not achieving that nice, lovely, round little cookie shape that we're used to seeing. So you want to give them plenty of space between each other and do your best to make the cookies this, about the same size, but it's okay if you have a couple that are a little smaller than some others. Cookies are just like people. Some of us are big, some of us are small, but all of us are sweet in our own way. All right, guys, I'm going to finish this up and then we will get to baking. Oops, hey guys. I think I need to get another cookie sheet. It looks like this cookie sheet is too small. It's only going to fit six out of the 12 cookies that I need to bake. So let's get a new sheet so we can fit all 12 of our cookies on the same sheet. 
Here I have a much larger sheet. And so I'm going to go ahead and transfer my cookies to this sheet so that I can fit them all. Of course, you could also leave your cookies on a smaller sheet if you have a smaller sheet and just bake in batches. That means instead of baking, you know, 12 at a time, you could bake six at a time or four at a time and then change it out every time you bake and remove the cookies from the sheet so that you can bake all of your cookies. Okay, our cookies are ready for the oven. And now we're going to place them in a 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven for seven to eight minutes or until they are golden, delicious, and brown. Bye bye cookies. We'll see you in seven to eight minutes. Don't forget everyone that because we are creating these cookies without any flour, we need to keep an eye on our cookies. Cookies will cook, spread, and become chewy and toasty because of the melting process of the sugar that is in the mixture. Once the sugar reaches a melting point where it will spread out and flatten, the baking soda will engage and it will cause the cookie to puff. But because there is no flour to help the cookie cook slowly, the sugar will reach a melting point very quickly and it's very hot. So you want to keep an eye on your cookies and at seven to eight minutes, take them out quickly, put them on your stove to rest, and then you should have a very delicious, chewy, and golden brown cookie. We'll see you when our cookies are ready. Okay guys, our cookies have been cooking for about eight minutes and they are lovely. I have taken them out of the oven and now I'm going to place them on a resting mat and allow them to sit for 30 seconds to a minute to cool. Now, this is because the cookies have cooked quickly, but this baking sheet is still very hot that they are sitting on. If I allow the cookies to stay on the baking sheet, resting outside of the oven, this baking sheet will continue to cook the cookies beyond the amount of time that we want them to be cooked. So that's why we only want to give them 30 seconds to a minute sitting on the baking sheet before we use a spatula to transfer them to a plate. The plate should be cool or room temperature and this will allow the cookies to sit and remain at the chewy temperature we want them to remain at without overcooking on the hot cookie sheet. So let's go ahead and transfer a few. These cookies came out very lovely. They're easy to cook, easy to mix, easy to make. So next time you have a hankering for a cookie and you think you need many, many ingredients to make it, just take a look at your pantry. You may only need five ingredients or less to enjoy something delicious. Thank you all for staying with us and we will see you in the next series. Bye-bye.